The core of the Christian faith is centered around the life and teachings of Jesus, a Jewish man who emerged 2000 years ago in the Roman province of Judea with a message of love and compassion. Christianity grew out of Jewish traditions and was shaped by Roman cultural and political structures for several centuries. Jesus left no writings, but the main sources of information regarding his life and teachings are the four canonical gospels written by his early followers. According to them, Jesus was born to a Jewish virgin named Mary in Bethlehem. His conception was a supernatural event as God impregnated her via the Holy Spirit. Jesus grew up in Nazareth and may have been a carpenter till the age of 30 when he took on to preaching. For about three years he traveled with twelve appointed disciples or apostles preaching from Jewish text an ethic of love and forgiveness and that he was the path to salvation, everlasting life and the kingdom of God. Not long after expelling merchants and money changers from the Jewish temple, Jesus shared the final meal with his apostles before being betrayed, arrested and tried before a Jewish judicial body called the Sanhedrin. Pressured by Jewish leaders who accused him of claiming to be king of Jews and thereby breaking the Roman social order, the Roman governor of Judea condemned Jesus to death by crucifixion, which was a Roman method of execution. The Gospels taught that Jesus was a miracle worker, a healer, the co-creator of the world, a divine prophet and the son of an almighty universal God. His death and resurrection were a sacrifice that fulfilled Jewish prophecies of a coming Messiah to execute God's loving plan for eternal salvation of humanity and forgiveness of its sins. After his body was resurrected by God, he ascended into heaven sending the Holy Spirit to guide and empower humanity. If Jesus had built the foundations of the Christian faith, it was a Jew named Paul who actually made it a religion. Besides establishing churches throughout the known world, Paul's inclusion of non-Jews in the Christian faith was unusual among movements of the time and was essential for the success of the early church, which may otherwise have remained just another Jewish sect. The Christian Bible is therefore divided into two parts, the Old Testament which is also recognized by followers of Judaism and the New Testament which provides accounts of the life and death of Jesus. Generally, people of all religious persuasions were tolerated within the pagan Roman Empire, yet submission to the deified Roman Emperor which Christians would not do was not an option. Christianity therefore had to survive the harshest possible Roman persecutions, especially under Emperor Nero who blamed Christians for the fire of Rome, Emperor Domitian and then most severely under Diocletian who was a zealot for paganism. When Constantine won victory over his rival in battle to become emperor, he attributed his success to the Christian God and became the first Roman emperor to convert to Christianity, which was a major turning point. Constantine granted religious toleration for Christians across the empire and by the end of the 4th century, Christianity as defined by the Council of Nicaea became the official religion of the Roman Empire. Efforts to formulate the faith and to address Christological debates consumed the Christian church for two centuries. The Council of Chalcedon, for example, affirmed that Jesus had two natures, fully God and fully man at the same time. Tertullian is hailed for the first use of the term Trinity, which does not appear nor is explicitly taught in the Bible. The doctrine which is now central to Christian faith explains the relationship between the Father, the one true creator God taught in the Old Testament, and Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit, who are concluded to be fully divine given what the Bible teaches about them. The Trinity addresses the question, if the Father is God, the Son is God and the Holy Spirit is God, then how can we say that there is only one God as per the Old Testament? Related to this, a long theological debate over the origin of the Holy Spirit, whether it proceeds from God the Father alone or from both the Father and the Son, partly led to the split of the church between Catholicism and Orthodoxy. The Great Schism was also due to disagreements over papal primacy and was exacerbated by cultural and historical differences between the Latin West and the Greek-oriented East. During the Middle Ages, a series of long religious wars known as the Crusades and supported by the Catholic Church took place. They include those to the Holy Land intended to liberate Jerusalem from Islamic rule, but also others in southern Spain and against pagan Slavic tribes in northern Europe. 
In 1517, a German monk named Martin Luther published a text that criticized some of the practices of the Catholic Church, including the sale of indulgences. He and others argued that the Bible, not tradition, should be the sole source of spiritual authority, and that the Bible didn't give the Pope the sole right to read and interpret the scripture. These ideas were not novel, but Luther and others became the first to skillfully use the power of the printing press to give them a wide audience. The Protestant Reformation ultimately split the Western Church into the Protestant and the Roman Catholic Church. It triggered persecutions by the Inquisition and bloody wars such as the Thirty Years' War, but also a period of Catholic resurgence, as well as an intellectual and cultural flourishing that partially marked the transition from the Middle Ages to the early modern period in Europe. At the same time, Christian missionaries accompanied European expansion to the Americas and elsewhere following the tracks of colonization and empire trade. New forms of Christian belief and practice were established across the globe and were shaped by local languages, cultures, and histories. Today, Christianity is the most widely practiced religion in the world and features many sects that have differing views and uphold separate traditions. A man's simple message of compassion and forgiveness remains just as powerful now as it did 2000 years ago.